Best scene, Simon Simon. Interior, Roger Wilco used cars, office, day. Roger, back at his desk, sits across from Simone, who's perched comfortably on a ratty leather chair, her long, seductive legs crossed as Roger does his level best not to glance towards them. Roger picks up the cold hot dog from his desk, offering it to Simone. Would you like to share my lunch? That little old thing? No thanks. Roger, not sure if he missed some kind of phallic humor, shrugs and readies for a bite. You don't mind if I just go ahead then? This is what I call a bachelor's three-course meal. Mustard, wiener, and a bun. <laughs> Get it? Roger inhales his meal, but continues to talk while chewing. There's always that one person tries to ruin it for you when you're enjoying a dog, telling you they're full of crushed chicken beaks and such. I've been known to enjoy a plump franc or two from time to time, especially watching a game of baseball. Roger notices the Spanish pronunciation of her last word. I never had you pegged for a fan of the good old national pastime. All that manly spitting and crotch grabbing? How could a girl resist? Roger proudly waves his arm around the office towards all the hung paraphernalia of his beloved team. I'm proud to say that Roger Wilco is the official used car dealership of the Thunder Chickens Baseball Club. Roger picks up a souvenir baseball displayed on the corner of his desk. This little baby's been autographed by every member of last year's championship squad. Game seven, extra innings. Chickens prevailed in one of the greatest games ever. Still gives me chills thinking about it. If your hands aren't too sweaty, I can't have any of the signatures smudged, go ahead and touch it. Simone gingerly takes the cherished keepsake from Roger, hefts it once or twice, and then gives it back. Impressive, huh? Very. He carefully returns the ball to its rightful place on his desk. Only 20 of those exist. They're all individually numbered. I got the certificate of authenticity to prove it. I can show it to you. Simone, lowering her sunglasses a touch, gestures in the direction of Roger's car salesman awards. Dios mio, that's quite the impressive array of hardware. Thanks for noticing. Always nice to get a little pat the tush from my peers. You're a regular Julie Andrews, Roger. She pronounces his name, Raya. He notices but slides back into their conversation. Who? Julie Andrews. She was a famous actress who won many awards as well. Perhaps not as many as you. Out of his peripheral vision, Roger notices Dale peering at them through the large window separating their offices. Roger, mildly irritated, grabs a cardboard car advertisement from beside his desk and places it quickly up against the window, blocking Dale's view. Mm. Julie Andrews? Mary Poppins. A vague look of recognition glances across his face. Right, of course. Julie Andrews was also Broadway's original Eliza Doolittle, but lost the screen role to Audrey Hepburn. A shame, really. Huh, you don't say. Miss Hepburn's singing in the movie had to be dubbed in by another singer. You really know your stuff. Are you an actress yourself? You me? No. No, claro. I might have dabbled in acting back in high school. Interior high school, janitor's room, night flashback. Simone, then a 17-year-old teenage boy named Simon, his face, a greasy mixture of actor's pancake makeup and streaking tears, struggles to scream amidst their fine darkness to no avail over top of the electrical tape gagging his mouth. Interior, Roger Wilco used Carr's office day. But I suppose those were just the crazy dreams of youth. Oh hey, where are my manners? Can I get you something to drink? I got coffee. Mind you, it's freeze-dried. Skip that. How about water? Sounds nice. One glass of old-fashioned tap water coming right up. Roger grabs a Thunder Chicken's mug from his desk drawer, leans over towards the sink and fills it with tap water before placing it in front of Simone who pulls from her handbag a bright yellow plastic straw adorned with a large butterfly which she places in her mug, taking a demure sip. Mm, thank you. Clear and tasteless, just the way I like it. Pardon? The water, I mean. You know. Clear and tasteless, forget it. So, you mentioned high school. Are you from around here? You seem vaguely familiar somehow. Simone reflexively pushes their sunglasses firmly back against her face, betraying a sliver of nervousness. Well, let's not talk about little old me. I bet you were that really popular boy back in school, Roger. Roger, am I right? Well, I guess you could say I had my share of friends. 
Those days are all a bit blurry nowadays. Funny. That's funny, Roger. One thing sticks with me was the counselor making us fill out a vocational questionnaire. You know, to help us figure out, figure out what we should do in life. When I got back the results, it said I was most suited to a career in agricultural engineering. Which was a complicated way of saying farming. <laughs> Crazy. Can you see me stepping in cow patties all day? Simone motions towards his car salesman awards. You seem to have done pretty well for yourself. Roger once more sees the persistently snooping Dale peering down at them from what little space remains atop the blocked glass. Grabbing a stray thunder chicken pennant, Roger, while continuing to maintain normal conversation, jams it into the last visible space in the glass. The dealership is fine, I guess. It's a living, you know? Simone takes one last sip before removing the straw and returning it to her handbag. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you again, Roger.